In this video, we'll take a look at the geometry of means and lines. We'll be looking at deviations, residuals, and squares. So first of all, let's just look at some values of y, the y sub i's, that's all the blue dots, and then the mean of the y's, that's just the line across the middle here. So deviations are y sub i minus y bar, that is the distance of each point from the mean. So we've been computing all along when we compute standard deviation, we have the values and the next column is each value of y minus the mean of y. Of course we could have had the x as x of i minus x bar, but here we're looking at y's. Then we square the deviations. This is the next column over. The x, we take the y sub i minus y bar and square it. So now we've taken each one of those residuals and made it into a square. So that's just the geometry of what that column of squared deviations would look like. And then we add those up. The sum of the y sub i minus y bar squared is 1575. So when you add all those up to get the numerator, when you're going to calculate the standard deviation, it's just the sum of the areas of those squares. So that's the geometry then of the sum of squares or the numerator for that, that for the calculation of the standard deviation. And there you can see it for this problem. Okay, now we have the same values of y sub i, but now we have a fitted line. You'll, we call it the least squares line, and you'll see a little bit more about what that means in just a second. So just like we took deviations from the mean, now we're going to get residuals. It's the same sort of thing, but it's the difference between the line and each individual point. So now we're going to call these residuals to distinguish them between deviations, which are differences from the mean. Now we're looking at differences between each point and the line, or the y sub i's minus the y hats. Now in our book, I think they put a y sub i here. That just meanings, means that this deviation is at this point for x. Right here. Okay, then we're going to square those. And so these are the squared residuals. And one thing you might want to note here, and we'll see this again in the slide in a moment, is that these squares are quite about a bit smaller. And if you think of it this way, when we have whether it's deviations or residuals, we're looking at how far off is our prediction. And so here we're a lot closer to our prediction than we were when we just used the mean as our prediction of, of each y. And then you have a sum of squares here. Again, that's just adding up the area of the squares, and it was 147. Here's just a look at the two things together, the sum of squared deviations. That was when we calculated the standard deviation. And then here is the sum of squared residuals. So when we're looking at lines, we'll get, get here. You might want to take a moment, pause, and just take a look at those two. Okay, the coefficient of determination, r squared, is 1 minus the sum of squared res residuals. Now remember, sum of squared residuals was error around the line. So 1 minus that would be how much we've explained. And then the sum of squared deviations was just when we calculated the, or the numerator, as if we were going to calculate the standard deviation. So that proportion is called the coefficient of determination. It's the proportion of y's variation that is accounted for by the regression line. So if that's really high, it has to be between 0 and 1. If that's really high, like say 0.9, that means that moving from the mean to the line, we've accounted for about 90% of that original error when we calculated the standard deviation. And the square root of the coefficient of determination is R the correlation coefficient, which we've already computed.